how you keep a little of your childhood inside of you. A place to go when things aren't going right. Now that's what you see when you look at one of Maud's paintings. It's that world from when you were a child with no shadows in it. <laughs> I guess this is a reminiscence, is what you'd call it, about Maud Lewis of Nova Scotia and the world she saw and painted. Maud was born Maud Dowley in 1903. That was over in Yarmouth County. She was artistic from the start. She learned to play the piano and she did real good until she got sick. <laughs> then her arms and neck sort of shrunk up. Well, the start of her painting was when she'd paint Christmas cards with her mother. She was still doing it when she married Everett Lewis. And she was more than 30 years old by then. Well, they settled into that little house that measured nine foot by ten foot six. And didn't Maud set to work and paint flowers all over the whole inside of it? The walls, the stairs, the stove, the doors, everything. And whenever it seen this happening, he didn't tell her to stop or anything but he bought her the first real artist brushes and paint she ever owned. Maud never. He lived in that little house right up until she died in 1970 in Everett. He lives there to this day. She painted long and all winter. That's about all she done. And of course, she done the cooking too. She done the other work and painting both. <laughs> kept her busy. <laughs> yeah. Kept me busy cutting the board. She never took a painting lesson. She never even saw any works of art. She was kind of cut off from everything except what was inside her. Running and jumping and laughing still They always have, they always will Needing nothing from yesterday Tomorrow's flowers will fade away eyelashes all sticking out. It's funny when you think of it. All her life, she was so little and frail, and everything she painted was so strong and full of happiness. 
Maud's world was never any bigger than 60 miles in any direction, but she got so much out of it. The farmers in the Annapolis Valley and oh, the fishermen and scallop draggers at Digby and inland the lumber roads with the oxen coming down them. Now, Maud used to perch up on the front seat of Everett's Model T Ford, and while he'd be peddling fish, she'd just watch with those bright bird's eyes. And then she'd paint all through the winter from her memory. Patchwork autumn and dandelion hills Brown-eyed cows and farmer bills Rowing the hillside, guiding the till Images seen from a windowsill Up and down tides with nowhere to go Sailboats hurrying to and fro Chasing the seagulls, climbing the breeze Stop them a moment and set them free and Funny too, when she was up there in the hospital the seagulls used to come around there all the time, right down by a window. And after she went, they never come at all. Funny, never come at all. They must know she was gone, I suppose. Near the end of her life, Maud was getting quite famous. People were coming from all over to see her little house and buy a painting or two. Sometimes a whole busload would stop. Now there was something to see. All those people trying to get a look in that little doll's house. <laughs> yes, she was getting quite famous. The fellow that used to attend it, he, he, he ain't there now. He's gone. He did. The fellow used to attend it. But I don't know who attends it now. When they laid Maud to rest, there was quite a mention made of it in the local papers. There was other artists telling about how good she painted and about her style and all. But if you could have asked Maud, she wouldn't have seen the need for all the big discussions. Just guessing my work up, she used to say. <laughs> Just guessing my work up. Daisies on doorsteps, Gardens on doors, big eyes and butterflies, simple and pure. Friendly slow oxen, still winter rides, all here together, all here inside. Running and jumping and laughing still They always have, they always will Needing nothing from yesterday Tomorrow's flowers will fade away 